Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R6515. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in the series as a whole, we're going to cover processors, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives, RAID, network cards, how to install VMware, how to install a Microsoft operating system, how to test your server, plus a whole lot more. So click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R6515. This video will be specifically dedicated towards processors, so let's just go ahead and hop in. There is one CPU inside. The CPU is an SP3 socket, which means it takes AMD Epic, uh, Milan, and Rome. So uh, Rome will be your uh, Zen 2, and Milan will be the newer Gen Zen 3. And technically, we're already on to Genoa, which is Zen 4, which will be uh, the next generation, which is your 16th gen boxes this is going to be a 15th gen box which is actually a really great sweet spot right now because they're actually starting to come out used so if you're looking for a good deal on a 6515 that's something that we can definitely help you out with so just hit up our sales team and we can get you some quotes and we keep these in stock all the time so the uh, the cpus you know a little bit more about the specs now people ask us all the time hey uh, what cpus do you recommend well that's a great question we break it down into three categories we have our low-end procs which are going to be a little bit more budget friendly but aren't going to be the best specs still good specs but not the best specs we have our value which is a nice sweet spot where you're still going to get good deals that are budget friendly a little bit more expensive than the low end but they're going to have uh, better specs and then we have our high-end procs which are going to be the more expensive ones that are coming down overall in, in pricing as a whole but they are going to be your more expensive ones that are going to be your uh, milan procs and so we're going to break it down to three categories right now all right, so there's three low-end procs that we recommend. It's going to be our 7252, our 7262, and our 7282. It's going to be a 3.1, 3.2, and a 2.8 gigahertz proc. So it's going to be 8-core, 8-core, 16-core. All three of these are great low-end procs. They're going to be budget-friendly. They're not the best specs because, you know, 8 and 16 cores aren't super high, but that's also great if you have Microsoft uh, licensing situation where you are limited to the number of cores you can have. Then, you know, that could be a situation where the 8 cores are actually, you know, in your favor. Uh, but as a whole, these are going to be your budget-friendly uh, low-end proc. So now we'll talk about our value procs. The three value procs that we recommend are going to be the 7402, the 7532, and the 7542. That's going to be a 2.8, 2.4, and 2.9 gigahertz. And that's 24 core, 32 core, and 32 core. So you can see we've definitely jumped up uh, quite substantially in the overall cores when we go to the value. And again, these are going to be budget-friendly. They're going to be more expensive than the low-end, but they're not going to break the bank. And this is a nice sweet spot that we recommend and that we build with quite a lot. So now let's talk about the high-end proc. All right, the three high-end procs that we recommend are the 7662, the 7763, and the 7773X. And the thing that I wanted to point out first off is that the two at the end of the part number lets you know that it is Zen 2, and the three at the end of the part number lets you know that it is Zen 3. So uh, the two uh, will be your Rome, and then your three will be your Milan, but that's just something to point out if you're wondering uh, what Zen it is from. It, you can tell by the uh, end of the part number. So that's going to be 2.0 2 gigahertz, 2.45, and 2.0. 2.2. All three are 64 cores. Uh, great procs, high-end procs. Uh, we did throw one of the Roams on there and didn't do all Milan just because it is 64 core and that one is a little bit cheaper. Uh, so we thought that might be a good one for you to check out. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about the procs as a whole, let's show you how to actually remove your old proc and install a new one. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work on our 6515. So I laid out everything that we are going to need. We're going to need a T15 bit, a T20 bit. So no, you will not need a Phillips head screwdriver. You will need your T15 and T20 bits. The CPU that we're going to be upgrading to. And I have some thermal paste to put on to our new CPU and a rag to clean off our old CPU and off of the uh, heat sink, more importantly. So all right, let's go ahead and open it up and show you exactly how to install your processor. All right, so uh, first things first, as we mentioned, there's one CPU. Um, in the next video that we will be doing, which is on our memory series, uh, or on the memory, uh, we're gonna go ahead and explain all the memory channels for the CPU, uh, which there are eight channels uh, based off of this one CPU, uh, but we'll get into more depth on that and how to actually install your RAM. And this video is gonna be more focused on how to install your processor. So we'll go ahead and remove our air baffle here. So first bit that we're gonna need is our T20 bit. Uh, we're gonna go from number one to number two to number three to number four, and that's how you will undo it. 
So pretty simple overall to start. And this is definitely a different way of installing your processors than uh, you might have uh, seen in the past, the way that uh, AMD does it uh, with their um, tray. And we'll, we'll get into that more in a bit, uh, but it's definitely a little bit different than what you might've seen in the past. Another thing I always like to note, I like to use the manual screwdriver uh, as opposed to an electric screwdriver. Electric screwdriver might be a little bit faster, uh, but I don't want to strip the uh, the screws at all or have the potential to strip them. And I like to be able to feel the uh, the pressure of the heat sink coming off the board. Uh, just gives you a little bit better feel for uh, the install as a whole. All right, so now we're going to take our heat sink off. So one of the things I always like to note is this is going to be the, uh, the messy thermal paste, and you do need to be careful with it because you don't want the thermal paste to uh, cake off into you know your dim slots or any of the, uh, the open um, uh, ports here or just your motherboard. You just don't want it anywhere, really. So um, I always like to just keep everything clean. That's why we brought a rag. Um, I'm going to clean this up first because I don't want when, because uh, it's all over the side right here, I don't want when I lift it up to somehow have it flake into uh, the pins. That would be the absolute worst case scenario. Um, so we're just going to get everything nice and clean, take our time here and just get it done right. And then just make sure that we have a just nice working, clean working environment here. All right, so there's a good start. And I'm going to go ahead and clean our heat sink. I'm going to do it over here just so, again, nothing flakes off onto the uh, motherboard or onto any of the exposed pins. I also like to do it when the uh, CPU is still in there just to be safe. So we'll get that nice and clean. And that was a lot of thermal paste on there. That's more than I normally see. Okay, so all right, now we've gotten that all cleaned up. So now we're going to remove our CPU. So all right, how do we go about doing this? Well, now we're gonna grab our T15 bit. We're gonna go three, two, one, and we're going to unscrew. And it's pretty simple overall. And the reason we do three, two, one is if you do one first, this thing can come flying up. So we don't want to do that. Okay. And I'm still kind of holding it down with my finger as well so it doesn't go shooting. Okay. All right, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get a lot of it cleaned up and leave that CPU in as it's even on our, uh, our, our casing here. So I'm just gonna get this cleaned up to just prevent any potential issues. And these are those just small little things that I think are important from a quality standpoint uh, to just keep your system uh, in good maintenance and good health because you don't want to come in here to do an upgrade and uh, the next thing you know you're causing other issues or other problems. So uh, I always just like to clean everything up. Okay, all right, looks like we're doing all right here. So all right, so now how do we actually remove the, uh, the CPU itself? Well, we have these two locks right here. We're just going to push them down. So it's just gonna come straight up. And when it gets all the way up, you are now actually going to slide this up. And this is where you have to be really careful when you're sliding them up because this bar right here, which hopefully my hand's not blocking, uh, and the capacitors that are on the underside of your, um, your CPU, they could easily collide with this bar. So you need to be really careful on how you pull them up to not accidentally hit them, and I'm going really slow to be extra safe. All right, so then once you get it out, you can just take it and put your old processor over here, grab your new processor, and you're going to slide this back in, and there's some indentions that you're gonna to see to start that will line up right here, so we're gonna just line this up and essentially come straight down. Okay, and same thing, you'll hear click in right there, and really it's clicking in down here. One of the things I did want to note when you're sliding it down, you still have to be very careful of this metal bar right here versus your capacitors. Uh, it's just a very tight fit, go very slow, and then you're just gonna come straight down. All right, so now we're gonna grab our thermal paste, and we're gonna 
pour some thermal paste on, nothing too crazy. And that honestly might even be a little too much, um, but you want a decent amount because these do run fairly hot. So you do want a, a little bit more than what I honestly put on some of the Intels. All right, now we're just going to pull this back down. I'm gonna grab our screwdriver, do number one, number two, And number three. So all right, now we're going to take our heat sink and simply put it back on. Uh, if you can't remember which direction, the number three faces over here. So we're gonna go ahead and just put this back on. And we are gonna grab our T20 again, and we are gonna go uh, backwards this time and go four. And you can do one, two, three, four, you can do it either way. Uh, I'm gonna go backwards this time and do four. Three, and now two. And one, and we're done. So just like that, we were able to install a new Epic Proc into our 6515. It didn't take too much work. Um, there are some you know, intricacies to be you know, careful with and you definitely wanna take your time and be safe uh, just to make sure that you're protecting the system. This is still a expensive system as a whole, not as expensive as the new ones that are crazy expensive that are 50 to 60,000. You can uh, get some of these from us from you know, five to $10,000 range and get a pretty sweet box overall. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in getting a custom built 6515, please reach out to our sales team at sales at cloudengines.com. That's sales at cloudengines.com. And hey, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by.